In this video we're going to take a quick look at IK and FK and the uses for the two. Most of you I'm sure are at at least a basic level familiar with what IK and FK are, but it's prudent just to point it out in case anyone isn't. FK is forward kinematics and IK is inverse kinematics and basically what they mean is this. Um, here we have two chains. This chain is posed on a bone by bone basis. So to create a pose in the chain you go through each individual bone or item of course and simply rotate or move or scale or whatever you happen to be after doing them into the desired position. With IK you have a slightly different system set up where you have a goal and of course a route to the chain and then by manipulating the goal the items in between will conform as necessary, fitting the route to goal structure in such a fashion as this, including of course with lock-offs at the end if one so desires and of course sets up. All of the IK stuff is found in the Motion Options panel in Lightwave and Lightwave's IK has some wonderful little tricks to it which we will come into in more detail in the tools section of this training but just for a quick heads up I will point out that IK is not solely available for rotation channels which is of course where you would normally find IK and what this chain here is doing. It is also available when working with position and even with scale. It is also not restricted to two bone situations like this. You can have any number of bones operating on IK in Lightwave. There is also available in Lightwave by default a rudimentary IK-FK blending control that allows you to switch between IK and FK control. This is useful in some situations but not all as we will see later but it can be handy in a few instances. So that is all well and good. The most important thing, however, to familiarize oneself at a level of the fundamentals are the different uses for IK and FK, and why it is that we would choose one system or the other in a given situation. If we take a look at this fellow here, we have IK set up for his legs. Now the most obvious and immediate advantage of IK, which was visible in the previous example, is the fact that it reduces workload. Rather than having to pose all three of these items, in this case hip, knee and ankle individually, I can simply animate this one single item and from that get control over all three of those joints there. The other major use for IK is that it provides a lock-off because the goal can be in a separate space or hierarchically separate from other parts of the rig. And so of course in a case such as this where we have a character we can move his hip around and his legs or rather his feet will stay planted on the spot which of course when we're animating things such as walks and runs is highly desirable. If you've never tried it by all means get yourself a character with FK legs and try and animate a walk cycle. You will find yourself having to repose every joint at every frame as the hip is traversing forwards or sideways whichever way it happens to be going and to keep the feet locked to the ground and not have them skitter or slide around is incredibly difficult you can waste hours and still not get it right in situations like this IK ceases to just be a time saver it becomes a fundamental necessity to the actual workflow of animation of course the same would be true for arms if we were going to be doing something like push-ups or perhaps a character was leaning against a wall whilst otherwise moving around, gripping the handlebars of a bicycle or the steering wheel of a car. These are all excellent examples of why you would use IK. Going initially from that, it does of course seem like it's a great answer to many animation woes. However, it is not. One of the key principles when producing animation is to create overlapping action. The reason that this is done is because this is how things often happen in the real world, in nature. If we play this short little clip here of an arm, there's a time offset. It's very minimal, but you can see it between when the upper arm joint arrives at its rest, which is around here, and when the elbow joint finishes unfurling and of course further on and into the wrist. It gives us this nice slick smooth motion where each joint follows after the next one in time. 
take a look at a person walking with their arms swinging by their sides, or indeed try and observe your own arms as you're walking around. This overlapping action is an incredibly common occurrence in the way that things move in the real world, which of course you need to replicate during animation. The point here is that IK is particularly poorly suited to this kind of animation. Trying to get good overlapping action that's smooth and natural using IK is pretty much just as difficult as trying to get locked off motion using FK, as I mentioned with the walk cycle FK leg example a moment ago. The real trick to it are these, the arcs. One thing that any animator will be told time and time and time again is watch your arcs. When things move, most especially at the ends of chains, such as the wrist here, they move through space in nice smooth arcs. Trying to animate these on an IK goal is incredibly difficult, and you will wind up with far more keyframes than you need. You can see, of course, how few keyframes are used here, to try and do that with IK would be incredibly difficult. Even more so because of the three-dimensional nature of the curve and the overlap of the two curves, the up curve and the down curve here. Here is an excellent example of such. This is simply a chain of bones that I have unraveling and unrolling. And we can see the arced, curved path motion that this end bone is of course going through as a result of the motion of all the bones above it. This of course is an FK rotation being applied to each and every bone there. And we can see the smooth arc that this gives and of course the small number of keyframes that is required to produce it. If however we try and get a singular object which is not part of the hierarchy as an IK goal would not be and try to get it to produce the same motion well what we can see is that at every tenth frame here the item is keyed in exactly the same place as where that bone would be but we can see the resultant path from it is nowhere near the same. We would need an additional keyframe here that's better but it's still not giving us that full smooth arc and with a simple bit of play we can see just how many keys we would start to need to use to produce this same kind of arc you're getting down to one keyframe every one or two frames it's incredibly difficult to do and of course when you want to come back and adjust your animation and adjust your timing whilst you're working it becomes a nightmare Therefore, there are clearly cases where you need to use IK and others where you wish to use FK. What you will find in general when it comes to characters is you will almost always want IK for the legs and FK for the arms. But again, that is in the majority of situations. If you've got a character who's doing push-ups, you will need IK on your arms. If you've got a situation where you have a character sat on a stool or a chair and they're swinging and kicking their feet about the way that a child does, you would want FK on the legs. This is why the IK-FK blending is an excellent tool to set up, because it means that you can go between one control method and the other as an animation requires, without having to build two or sometimes even more separate rigs and of course allows you to switch functionality during the course of an animation. So a character can walk along, drop down, do push-ups, get up, walk away again. Further, talking in more general terms, not just of regular biped characters here, but pretty much any kind of creature, or indeed mechanic, so going for robotics or whatever else here, you will generally find that IK should be used on a limb or appendage or whatever when you wish for the end of that chain to remain in contact with a surface such as the way a foot stays locked to the floor for each step in a walk cycle or the way the hand stays locked to the floor in a push-up furthermore you will usually want to use IK for directed actions. For instance, if your character is throwing a punch or doing a thrust with a sword, perhaps you've got a scorpion and they're springing with their tail to strike at something. Again, this is a movement best served by IK. The reason why is because in such situations, the individual is trying to direct the end of their 
appendage, be that their hand or their stinger or foot or whatnot, at a certain point in space. It's the way that you think, it's the way that the brain pictures the motion, trying to put the end at a certain point, all of the joints move in unison. And this is a movement for IK. Even something like reaching out to pick up a cup of coffee or writing with a pen would want an IK controller for the most natural motion. Conversely, when, as I said before, you have a character walking and they're swinging their arms, you need overlapping action, and this would be animated on FK. Similarly, quite often spines will be animated on FK as they swing backwards and forwards as a character moves around. The same for heads and necks, unless your character was doing some weird kind of head push-up. And these situations that I've just mentioned give us a finer illustration of when to use IK and FK. Bodies, characters, machines, they move through space, and they are subject to the laws of physics, most commonly that we're used to, gravity. And what all things try to do is conserve energy. When you are walking and your arms are swinging by your side, it's done for balance, but you don't put too much effort into the swinging of your arms. Rather, you just let the normal pendulum mechanics take over somewhat, and that is why the arms swing in an FK type of motion with overlap exactly what you would get if you had a double jointed pendulum and you were to swing it. In the case of, as I said, the sword thrust or the writing with a pen, you are intentionally trying to put your hand in a certain place and your muscles take over to overcome the external forces of gravity, momentum, inertia and so on. And it is in those cases where you use IK animation. We will see practical setups for these as we go through the training and how you can create creative and useful systems for switching between either IK or FK and which kind of structures we can build in different ways to give the right kind of control.